Hi you guys, it's Stephanie. Welcome back to my channel, Coffee, Paper, Scissors, or welcome if you're new. Um, okay, so I'm still working on the altered book and I have done a little bit of painting. So I'm going to show you what I've done so far and then tell you again how I got to this point. So it's a Reader's Digest and there were... 575-ish pages. I went in and left the first several pages and I painted where there were um, words or pictures. There was an outline here that I thought was fine, so I just painted the pictures. I mean words. And then I started my pockets. So I have a top pocket, a side pocket, and then I have writing page that I painted both sides of. And it's worked out really well. I've never painted a page that I can remember. You can kind of see the print through it, and I like that. Um, I got really lucky on the color that I chose. I, I didn't take the book with me or anything, and it is really almost the exact same color as the paper. So, I think that's good. And I've inked around after the paint dried. So then we have um, a side pocket and then a top and then another page. So what I'm doing is two pockets, painted page, two pockets, painted page. Okay. And then on the, where I have the two pockets, I had one sheet of book page, and then I tore out eight or nine sheets, and then a sheet of book page, and those two glued together make the pocket. So then here I had a book page, I tore out eight or nine, and then I had a book page glued together to make a pocket. Single page. Book page, tore out eight or nine, single page, Okay, so you get that. And then I'm trying to do two pockets, one book page for writing. Two book, or two pockets, one book page for writing. So I thought we would glue a couple more in. And then most likely I will do the rest of this on my own because it's going to be the same thing over and over again. I will do a top or a side. I'll do, you know, one this way, um, like this one, or I will do them like this. I might um, do some belly bands here and there. So, or I might go back when I'm all done and add a belly band, like on this side, on the other side of where there is a pocket. So I don't know yet. I'll, I'll kind of figure that out as I go. And the pages aren't too stiff or anything. Everything seems to be moving around okay and not taking up too much room. So I'm satisfied with that. So today is Sunday. I normally don't get to make a video on Sunday, but... I do have some free time, so here I am. And we are having a windy day today, and we have um, warnings in place for um, gusts. And it says like 50-something to 60-something miles an hour, but then it says even possibly 70-something miles an hour. So I'm hoping that doesn't happen. Hopefully they're... You know, um, just kind of saying it could happen, not that it's gonna, because there's so many trees and there are always such power outages after, you know, big windstorms and stuff. So hopefully that does not happen. Okay, so here's where I've torn out the pages, and I'm going to stick another sheet 
on here, then we'll glue these two together. I'm doing a load of laundry and I kind of thought, should I or shouldn't I? Because the last thing I want to have happen is the washing machine to stop mid-cycle and then have a power outage for a day or who knows how long. The longest we've gone here with a power outage since I've lived here is about two days. I don't, I don't want that to happen. <laughs> I mean, I can rinse the clothes out, but you know, these, these washing machines, those front loaders, they don't hold the water the same as the old style, you know, drum type washing machine. And okay, that's not good. And so I think the water would just sit in there and then I'm not even sure how to tell it to drain because they don't, they don't just do what you want them to do anymore. They've got a computer in them that does what it wants to do. Sounds about like society or not society, but sounds about like the way everything is made these days. It does what it wants to do no matter what. Of course, society, I guess, is a little like that too, including myself. I do what I want to do, I suppose. And I think that's a good thing if you want to hear my philosophy on that. I'm sure you all want to hear my philosophy on that. Um, what a boring place it would be if, you know, everybody did exactly what you did or thought exactly what you thought, you know? I think the differences are blessings if we would just see them as such. That's my thoughts on that. Okay. Um, I'm going to go ahead and this one I'm pretty sure I was going to do up top. This one is top. Or no, I was, what was I going to do? I think I was going to do a side. And you know how we'll have like tabs sticking out of these side pockets? I don't want all of my tabs coming out right at the middle of the book. And so I'm going to alter them or um, stagger them uh, to different places on the page when I do a side pocket. I don't know if that's really what my thought was originally, but I think that's what I'm going to do. Since I already put my punch um, there, I don't have much of a choice. Trying to get these pages to line up okay. And so far I think I'm doing okay with that. It's it's coming out. You know, things aren't laying weird or anything. Um, as far as I can tell, anyway, so far. They are not laying weird. I'm going to go ahead and ink around. So I left this uninked so I could show you guys. I took the paint and I only painted the words. And see how almost the exact same color it is. So that turned out pretty well. And then I just go back in and ink around 
um, the edge of the page. Like I said before, I, I plan on adding things, you know, like decorations or stamping or so. I'm not sure what I'm going to add yet. I'll figure that out um, when the time comes, but I won't leave it just blank. And then I took one of these and I went down the center. I already did this one. So, but I did not do this side. So I would just take and go down inside of there. before there's a lot of spinning and changing positions on this thing for sure it's it's different but you know it, it's fine it's not difficult or anything I'll see how it goes but yeah at some point I might go in and do some um, inking just right in the center too I don't know yet we'll see I can kind of think I'll I'll know what I want to do when I go to decorate more I should have done the inside of this page here okay so then I think what I was going to do on this page was this one is going to be painted I think another pocket maybe I'll do another side yeah maybe Sorry guys, I'm thinking. I I wasn't prepared to do that. Okay, what do I have? I have a top, a side, and then a long one. A top, two diagonals, a side. So I need to do another long one but I didn't pull out the right papers in order to do that. Okay, hold on just a second. I need to find my stamp paper again. There it is. I should have cut this shorter. I don't think it's gonna work to do that now. So I'm gonna go ahead and fold this. So definitely when you're doing this, if you decide to make one yourself, definitely give yourself plenty of space in the, the seam there um, so that you're not making it so that your pages aren't bending properly. And inking, you know, totally helps cover up all of that space. It, it kind of looks like it's gonna look weird, but I, I, I don't think it does in the end. I think it's fine.
of a gray and gloomy day out there, that's for sure. We have some friends who had to oh, um, drive to Montana today to pick up a vehicle and trailer it back here to Washington. And they're going to be coming back into town with this trailer with a vehicle on it in high speed winds. And I hope that they, I hope that they don't push it. They, they knew that there was a wind warning, so it's not like they're going to be surprised if they have to pull off. I don't know where the wind is worse, if it's going to be over into Idaho too, or if it's just here in Washington or in Spokane area where it's more flat. It's not necessarily flat if you've not been to Spokane, but just right in Spokane, the hills are a distance away, but sometimes the wind gusts through the, oh my goodness, the prairie, um, where the airport is in Spokane area, it's Airway Heights. It is so windy all the time over there. I do not like wind. Um, where I went to college was windy and I mean, oh, I'm telling you what. And that was back in the day where we were just growing out of the giant um, bangs or fringe, depending on where, where you live in the world. Um, you know, those big puffy ratted bangs with tons of hairspray. And wind was not the friend to the bangs. That is for sure. So I don't think this is going to work. Because I don't want it to be able to be seen that there's an, another picture down in there. So I will just cut another bit off. We'll just go a little farther with it. Maybe halfway through this stamp and there'll be plenty. Anyway, yeah, it, all that hairspray would, you know, be blown right out and you'd have flat bangs, which was dreadful, you know, you didn't want flat bangs. I didn't have the really, really tall red ones, but um, I, I tried, I tried to fit in as much as I possibly could. Luckily, though, that went away pretty pretty quickly um, in the 90s, early 90s. My first roommate, and maybe I've told you guys this before, she had huge hair. Um, she had straight, flat hair, which was beautiful. Um, but, like, she was one of those, like, the really silky, straight hair. It didn't have a lot of body to it or anything, and she would put rollers in it to try and add body to it but she had bangs and she would tease and rat and hairspray those bangs in the morning and they stood straight up and she loved those bangs and the wind did not do them any favors <laughs> they would move as one solid piece you know it's pretty funny actually So I inked all of this thinking I was going to be putting um, a side punch and this was going to end up being my pocket. That's why that's all inked. Okay, I'm going to do that. And then I thought we would um, paint a page so that you can see how I'm doing it, even though I explained it, but just in case you wanted to see. And then, like I said, I think I'll just do the rest of all of this on my own because it's fairly obvious what I'm doing. My husband's in there listening to some noisy I think I hear cars. 
my poor husband, he's he's got a problem just like us crafters. He likes cars and he wants them. You know, we understand. It's just that I can fit a whole bunch of things in my craft room and he can only fit so many cars, you know, in his shop. So he has to make really good decisions. And you know, they're <laughs> awfully different um, in price <laughs> than our craft supplies, thankfully. Um, but he just saw on Facebook Marketplace, he saw a Camaro and he wanted it. He's like, this is perfect. This is what I've wanted, you know, for so long. And finally I said, would you just go look at it? Cause it was local. So he, he messaged the person and it, it had sold. And I don't know if it had just sold or if it had sold and they hadn't taken it off of Marketplace yet, but he waited a day too long maybe. So now he's looking and looking and looking online to try and find its replacement. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, we'll glue this one on and then I'll paint this page. Did I say what your Camaro, he wants an old one. You know, he wants a 67 or a 68. He said that there was some kid in high school that drove one of those. And he just, that to him, you know how when you see something, you're like, that's it. That to him was the vehicle that he needed to have someday. And he still hasn't, you know, been able to accomplish that, so. I think that's his goal. And he says, this will be it. You know, when, whenever I finally get this one, that'll be it. I'm like, whatever. <laughs> whatever. I'm like, that may be it muscle car wise. But since, so I've known him since 90 we've been together since 99 and during that time he's had well he had a Corvette I don't remember it wasn't a real old one I mean it was an older one but like gosh I feel like it was either a 74 or a 76 and I, I don't know for sure he had that, but he has really long legs and he had a really hard time driving it because his knees were right up there with the steering wheel. So it was really uncomfortable for him. And so then he went from that to a 68 Mustang. And then he, he got that one all fixed up and then he decided he didn't want that anymore. And he even had that one painted. So like it was, he got it all fixed up and he had it painted and I thought, well, he'll keep that one forever, but then he sold it. And then he got, I think it was a little while before he um, bought anything else old. You know, we just had our regular vehicles. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and paint. So I bought it's just a flat house paint. I told them the cheapest one that they had and the color, I accidentally left my brush sitting out. So hopefully it's not all goopy and dry. I, I covered it with a paper towel that was wet. So hopefully it's fine. The color that I got, well, it's an Ace hardware and it's just kind of an off white. So anyway, but look at that. It's almost the exact same color as the book. And so I'm just going, you know, to where the words are. Ooh. 
Yeah, it's a little bumpy. So I'm going to have to clean my brush out when I do this page or after I do this page. It's got little bits that have dried onto the brush. Oh, anyway, so then he got a truck. I know you guys are just so curious. He had a truck for several years. Um, it was a 64 Chevy long bed something or other. I don't know much about that kind of stuff. I know that I kept trying to find him a model for it, you know, and I could never find that. In, in like the plastic model that you can glue together. Anyway, he sold that and now he has, what is it? A Pontiac something or other. I think it's a, I don't know what year it is. It's a 60 something. And then my, and so he's been working on that this winter and my dad gave my son an old Mustang that's no, not in the best condition, but my husband can work on cars, so they've got two old vehicles sitting out there right now to work on, which in my opinion is plenty, but now he wants the Camaro, but he doesn't want to get one to work on. He wants to get one that's done. However, if he found one to work on and it was the right one, he would do that. So now that you know everything you needed to know about my husband and his love for cars, I will let you guys go and I will talk to you later. Thanks for watching. Bye.